Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters of the Week video. Thought I would mix one of these in while I'm wrapping up the Mysteries and Oddities videos. And then that way I'll start focusing on some other series here. This random week suggestion came from, once again, cryptids.wikia.com, just hitting the random page link, and it came up with this. And the reason why I decided to go ahead and talk about this one is the fact that I think this is the very first time I've read something like this happen. This cryptid caused the death of a person, and that person, on their gravestone, it actually lists the cryptid on it. So in other words, on the gravestone of the person that was deceased, uh, this cryptid is listed as a way to commemorate what occurred. Never really heard of that before within any other tale, unless someone else can point out to a different one, but that's what definitely fast, you know, caught my attention. It made it very, very fascinating. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and talk about this. You're looking at it now, it basically looks like a giant otter, which for all intents and purposes, it could just be. And it's known as this, the Dobhar Chu, although it goes by various other names, including the Duragu, the Sea Dog, and also the Irish Crocodile, and then other names afterwards too. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating information associated with this creature. So what is this Dobhar Chu? Well again, take your average looking otter, you know how they look very, very cute, at least when they're small, but in this case, multiply it to a larger size, probably about the size of a, of a human, if you consider, in this case, the tail of it, the elongated tail. So all of a sudden, it ain't so cute. Um, otters can be very aggressive, uh, especially with, of course, those 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 very nice fangs or not teeth that they have uh, on their face. So imagine this thing larger than usual, and you're dealing with something that is uh, potentially very dangerous. Now it's found at a very very specific spot, and you know I love whenever I read this stuff because then it just makes it so tantalizing the idea that you can just go out there and then try to find it right then and there. It's known as the Akeel Island which is found west of County Mayo there in Ireland. In fact this is probably a good representation of its location right there but yes if you go there there's a lake that's known as the Strahins Lau. I hope I'm saying that name correctly as well but that seems to be its location, not only from past centuries ago, but also its most recent location too, as recent as 2003 to be specific. So quite interesting. If anybody's out there in the, in the Ireland area, and you happen to pass by that lake, that Strahin's Lau, again by the Akeel Island, then you're in luck. You're in a good spot to be able to see this Dobha Chu. Let's talk about its physical characteristics as well. So again, it's basically just a larger sized otter. It has the same otter-like face, the same fur on it too. Uh, it seems to have also the tail, although the tail in this case, instead of being um, more traditional looking like an otter would have. This one just uh, appears to be more elongated, although other interpretations place it having somewhere on the lines of fins as well, because maybe it spends a longer amount of time there in the water as opposed to a regular otter would. But it's definitely a social animal. In other words, it pairs in other groups of the very same Dorhao Chu. In fact, it's keen on doing this because it's almost like protecting its territory, doing it this way, and it's also making sure that it's on the hunt in this manner too. And leading to that, it is also, again, very, very aggressive. It will rush, it will attack anybody that comes by its location. In fact, they've been known to actually come out of the water itself and onto land. So sometimes some animals, they'll just give up as soon as they see uh, whatever is within their territory, kind of like walk away between the barrier of land and sea. No, this thing, it'll actually charge out of the water itself and then come onto the land and still continue right after you. And that could be a pretty frightful sight because you think you're in the clear once you're on land. Like let's say this thing was trying to attack your boat, maybe as you see like an interpretation here, and then you just get onto land and you're like, okay, everything's cool. No, it's not. All of a sudden there it is charging straight to you as well. But yes, this thing is very, very aggressive. It'll also be aggressive to other animals, including dogs. You know how curious dogs always are. They have to inspect whatever they find as something that um, 
they see either on land or on the water itself. Uh, so when humans, um, anybody has their beloved dogs with them, they'll be known to attack the dogs too. And I could just imagine in a situation like that, the poor dog, it has no choice. It's just trying to defend its beloved owner. And in, But in this case, it won't stand any chance whatsoever against this dope heart chew. Now, as far as its sightings, I mentioned earlier, yes, it goes back to several centuries. In fact, the earliest known sighting seems to be back in 1684. There was in a book called A Description of West Canals by a guy named Roderick O'Flattery. And there he described the creature uh, as it is, as it's seen today. So with regards to this creature existing in that specific spot, it, it, most likely it doesn't live that long, like in other words, several centuries long, but there should be at least a clan or some kind of family of them that just continue to live on one generation after the other. At least that's what my opinion is whenever you consider anything involving the animal world and 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 the uh, the animals within them but yes that seems to be one sighting and then the other most notable sighting i mentioned this earlier so get this there was the a woman by the name of Kinlu Stone, and at this uh, back in the 17th century, and uh, this woman, unfortunately, what happened to her? She encountered one of these Dobhar Chu while she was there. I think in actually the same area, somewhere around there in Ireland. But what happened was she ended up dying from this encounter. Remember, these things are pretty aggressive. And so what happened is when she passed away, then at that gravestone, this thing, whatever it was was actually placed on her headstone her gravestone whatever you call it to, to commemorate and it and let it be known thereafter that this is what occurred to this poor woman isn't that crazy i've never heard of anything like that before so whoever this poor woman was this kinla stone she was not the first victim but at least the first one to be listed with a very specific gravestone afterward there's yet another one there uh if you if you go there uh the, the, to the place called the glenada stone there there's a graveyard that also has the figure of another dobhachu listed on there too so very very fascinating stuff come to think of it actually i think kinlo stone is the name of the grave site not the name of the woman my apologies the woman is uh somebody nameless apparently but her grave site there in kinla stone marked that specific encounter and so did this other one in glenada stone so there you have two gravestones both of them within two different graveyards that commemorate in this case what happened to themselves after being killed uh, from this Dobharchu. So very, very interesting, very fascinating stuff. Uh, like I have never heard of anything like that before and there, nothing like that afterward, unless, um, again, if someone has any specific info that, 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 that might point to a different direction, then please, I'll be happy to hear it. So, But that's pretty much it. Not much other else info associated with this Dobharchu. Wherever they are there in those islands, that Akil Island there uh, in Ireland, they seem to be doing a pretty good job and laying low the most recent encounter the only thing left really is about 2003 i mentioned that earlier there was a guy by the name of sean corcoran who was there with his wife and they reported seeing this creature the way they saw it they described it was like this it was a giant creature that had this dark coloring i guess this fur on it interesting enough it had membranes on it too membranes the first thing that comes to mind it makes it seem like it's far more aquatic than it should be maybe they were closer than some of the previous encounters throughout the past centuries and they were able to see in far more detail than before but yes they whatever this was that obviously didn't look like anything else they had seen before and so described it and then uh, it came to be that this was in this case another encounter of the Dobrachu but that was again in 2003 specifically on a place called Omi Island, Connemara, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know how far away that is from Akil Island. It could be close by. It could be the same thing. Somebody uh, point that out um, in the comments too, but that is the most recent encounter at the very least. So if anybody has anything else, uh, anything else about a mist, 
please post those comments below. What about those of you that happen to be by that location? Anybody else heard of this? Maybe growing up with other family members or traveling for business, traveling for work, traveling for fun. If anybody else happens to be at that location too and knows more info about this, please share that below too. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.